Welcome to the second module of our course, Handholding for Entrepreneurship. Handholding is extremely critical for startups. As you know, it's a very lonely journey there where you take your idea to the market and you believe in your idea and everybody else around you will keep on saying, oh, will this work? Will this not work? So when you have a very, very good handholding pre-incubator or a handholding team, it is a real boon. So today we're going to discuss that particular aspect. We always tell you in school to get good grades, fall in line and of course get a good job. But now we are asking you to create jobs by encouraging you to build startups. Here is the story of Perseverance, the rag to riches story of Mustafa, a daily wage worker from a remote village in Vainad, Kerala. Mustafa was just 10 years old when he dropped out of school and failed his fifth class. He had to help his father to make both ends meet and they were poverty stricken. He went back to school on insistence of his teacher and ended up studying engineering at NIT Calicut. Mustafa further went on to study MBA at IIM Bangalore and started an enterprise that sold idli and dosa batter along with his cousins while pursuing his MBA. After his engineering education, Mustafa got some very good jobs. He also worked in a startup in Bangalore and after that he got a very good MNC job abroad and that gave him a very very fat salary. After finishing his engineering, Mustafa worked in several places. He also worked in a startup which fetched him around 6,000 rupees. That also was big money for his family. But then when he got his job in Dubai at an MNC, his salary jumped and his father was in tears because he cleared all his father's debts of his studies. Mustafa was always concerned about his people back home. He was concerned about the poverty in his village and he was also concerned about the lack of jobs to all his cousins and his friends. In one of the meetings, his cousins came up with the idea of creating a trusted brand for ready-to-cook idli dosa batter. They decided to name it ID and things began to roll. They were providing fresh food without any preservatives and on prolonged storage in one of the shops, there was a batter blast because the batter expanded on fermentation. After the batter blast incident, Mustafa was shaken up. His computer science skills came in handy and he created a special software so that his supply chain network could be organized. This way, he started supplying the right quantity to the local stores which, which did not have refrigeration and also would supply to large stores which had refrigeration for a longer period of time. This way, he could increase his business and then it became a very, very large success story. Uh, as you all know, from Idli Dosa batter, they started Medu Vada, they started Parathas and of course now the coffee. And with all this, you know, his band grew and it is still growing and it's a very, very trusted and reputed company today. Developing an entrepreneur's mindset is the key to reduce doubt, fear and anxiety. It can also help to drive action, focus and growth as we've seen in this ID story. Today, we will share with you the five GDC startup stories where they handhold these budding entrepreneurs. Let me now introduce you to the two speakers from GDC. Mr. K.V. Anand, who I introduced earlier, and Mr. Rajiv Jain. Rajiv Jain is the Chief Operating Officer of GDC. Rajiv has been known for wearing many hats through the span of his professional career. For over three decades, Rajiv has played diverse roles as a business leader, startup mentor and performance coach, with leading Indian and international corporates in solar modules, telecom, power, bottom of pyramid products, tires, textiles, paints and industries. As part of his sabbatical break, Rajiv also devoted a year heading a US aid South-South cooperation project focused on farmers in Kenya, Malawi and India. That shows Rajiv's passion to create value and bring social change for the underserved. Rajiv did his MBA from IIM Ahmedabad and graduation from Sri Ram College of Commerce, Delhi. Rajiv's love for travel and exploration has taken him to over 35 countries and even inspired him to work in Bangladesh and Indonesia for extended periods, adding depth and flavor to his cross cultural and global business learnings. So, let me now take you to the second lecture. Handholding for entrepreneurship. Yep, thank you.
Okay, let me begin by introducing the panelists. Anurag is an alumnus of uh, IIT Bombay. So uh, he, he came to our program when he was still doing his BTEC. He started his entrepreneurial journey quite early. So even when he came to the program and he was still a student, he had already created a startup and even sold it. You know, there is a lot that we can uh, speak about Anurag and his entrepreneurial mindset and his entrepreneurship. Thanks uh, for the kind introduction. So uh, as uh, Anand sir told, I am in my third leg of entrepreneurship right now. And uh, I'm an IIT Bombay alumni. Uh, coincidentally, before IIT Bombay, actually I cleared uh, uh, the medical entrance examination and uh, the JE for IIT entrance both and uh, come from a family of doctors. So I had a keen interest in healthcare and medicine. I even ended up doing engineering, but uh, that keenness to do something in medical and healthcare was always there. So uh, just like when I jogged down my memory, I had been a jack of a lot of trades during my uh, college time. So did dabble into cryptocurrencies, waste disposal, uh, like uh, app building, website building for other seniors who are coming up with startups and all providing them a service for like building applications for them. And eventually I realized that uh, healthcare is something that uh, I would like to settle upon. And uh, during my college days before graduating, I started my first uh, startup. Uh, I started my entrepreneurial journey and uh, like it was a pregnancy care platform. It is still alive and revenue generating in a growth stage uh, currently named Care NX Innovations with the product name Care Mother and uh, having sales both uh, in India and uh, Southeast Asia and uh, in some bits and bytes in Africa and uh, Western countries as well. So uh, the idea that how we came up with uh, was uh, like, uh, co I, the, my other two co-founders were not from IIT. I used to interact with a lot of people uh, and uh, network with a lot of people. And that, that is where we realized that we have some common interest and uh, wanted to do something in healthcare. Uh, we had a uh, friend that, uh, whose sister had two stillbirths in, uh, in her native place in the village. And that is where we like, uh, again, because of that, we realized that, uh, okay, this is not a small problem. That is a very big problem in a country like India where care is not ample enough. So in metro cities or tier one cities, the care is uh, doctor to patient ratio is very good. But as you move for like for further away from tier one cities, it uh, reduces down by a lot. And that was when we, started care and next we did not incorporate for a year so we started developing the product we started testing it out uh, trying it out with doctors and we realized that a lot of people were willing to pay for it and it was i think after nine or ten months that we decided let's uh, register a uh, formal venture and start selling uh, the software uh, start building it in a sustainable way because that was very important that we keep going keep building things and uh, keep helping other people and that is uh, how I started my first venture. And uh, by 2016 mid, when I started transitioning away from the venture, uh, we had delivered care to 15,000 plus mothers in India during the entire nine months course of pregnancy. And uh, yeah, by that same time, I developed the interest uh, away from software into hardware, medical devices and started my second venture. And uh, that, that was a medical device design and development company, Dynasense. Uh, where we, like, uh, from 2016, last quarter to 2019, we designed and developed uh, five devices, three diagnostic devices, two surgical tools uh, for other people. Uh, in hindsight, it was never the aim to build a service company. We always wanted to build a product company. It eventually became a service company where uh, it was generating revenues and uh, we did not have to go for funding. A lot of learnings uh, from around there, like why not really a great idea in hindsight. And uh, currently, like uh, around the same time, I also happened to be fortunate enough to be a part of GDC. And uh, uh, last year, I started uh, my third leg of entrepreneurship with Neodocs. And uh, we are building at-home diagnostic uh, tests where you can get instant results just using a smartphone and a wellness card that we built. And uh, we are like fortunate enough to be backed by a lot of... Uh, big angels, a lot of uh, institutional funds. And uh, we recently were also a part of Y Combinator Incubator. Yes, and uh, that is about uh, myself, how uh, what I have been doing till now. So uh, Anurag, what is your moment of truth? There were two, three factors into it, sir. So 
like one of uh, the thing was the problem uh, that i started my first venture with it uh, she was a very close friend she herself was a doctor and uh, her sister having two still birth and uh, like when you know people you are able to empathize more you are able to understand the actual pain uh, versus what you just get to read in uh, like from articles or from other people so that is where i realized like again the one of the learnings that you need to empathize you need to be in touch with the users or customers so that was one of the factors the second was uh, i having dabbled into a couple of things i realized that i have this skill set and uh, it is very hard to like not survive uh, if you have a skill set so i was not afraid of not being like i i, I deferred my placements i did not sit for placements and uh, there were my batchmates who were like someone was going for higher studies to us or europe uh, joining companies like microsoft google uh, having great packages and all and they i was like forgoing the placements and all but i knew that uh, uh, like Uh, maybe that amount of money or quantum of money may or may not be there but i still enjoyed what i was doing and i knew that the skill sets that i have i'll uh, like survival would not be an issue it mm. uh, like uh, what what you can do the independence and all that is something i enjoy right thank you we'll come back to you with the next round of questions and then we have amit srivastava the ceo and the co-founder of infiu labs and uh, he was a student at iit madras uh, and amit also came to our program he was part of the second cohort of the incubate program amit is now uh, incubated at iit gandhinagar first of all thanks anand sir raghu sir and entire gdc team for inviting me over here it's always a pleasure to you know talk to you guys and working with you as well as interacting with other gdc fellows so hi everyone uh, i'm amit shrivastava uh, co-founder and ceo of infu labs Uh, from my uh, academic part, I did my bachelor's in engineering physics from IIT Madras. So uh, how how we actually you know started working on because uh, you know to my personal affection I had a I have I had a huge interest in astronomy. So in fact you know in my own college days I am more towards I'll be doing the astronomy and you know working in this I got a professional experience as well in that like working in a observatory in Manchester and so on, but. after point i realized you know i like astronomy but not something like a coding part you know i no offense no offense to anyone but i don't like coding much personally you know and uh, that is when uh, more than that i started understanding what my personal affection is you know like everyone uh, you know talk about creating an impact and uh, doing something to create an impact and same goes with me also i'm also into the same line where we thought okay uh, i'll actually you know uh, work in something to create a to create something which can have a impact in a social life you know so uh, so that is where you know uh, with my co-founder ankit uh, that time he was working in uh, germany uh, he was a algorithm scientist in an institute and uh, both of us has a huge affection towards uh, food wastage you know and uh, iit madras has gave us a very enriched innovation culture where you know i was in my third year and working on uh, something you know to be honest right now i would like to say something because it was a tech thing i can't label it as a product or anything it was just a tech thing which i, I know what is the potential and that's why i was fortunate enough to you know talk to the gds team uh, anand sir and raghu sir and everyone that uh, sir this is something we are uh, i'm trying to build in you help me out to explore the potential of it you know what can be done over there and we started working on something called a very problem called critical color shade matching in the textile industry uh, so and even at that point you know you can understand we come from a tech background so we don't know how to even find out whether someone wants to buy it or not always we always had this uh, understanding that look, if our product looks good that's it we can sell anything and that's where you know one of our uh, major uh, highlighting point came into the picture that the moment we started interacting with the people and uh, you know started demonstrating them something they have a very different uh, approach towards what they want and uh, that's one of the key insight i gotten from through gdc program also that you know uh, no matter how uh, good looking your product uh, uh, goes in but what is been required at the ground level is is very different you know it's very different i would say so uh, over the period of our entire gdc we worked on we actually uh, find out that okay there is a problem and we could have a potential solution for it but even at that point we realized 
you know, we would we wouldn't like to go ahead in that direction because the segment which we were working on has been some external influences into the picture, you know, and that's what you uh, usually while building a business, people doesn't recognize that uh, a business is not just what you're working on, but your environment is letting you to work on as well. So over there, then Ankit also came back from Germany to uh, India, and he comes from a farming background. And uh, due to our uh, mutual affection towards food wastage, we started uh, our work. We started interacting with farmers, retailers, distributors, and so. And that is by the time I already graduated from the GDC program, but the learning, yeah, so-called, you know, questioning uh, questioning in a way that you're not selling the product, but rather than trying to know whether someone is going to spend one penny of it. So all of my mentors actually has, you know, gave me a collective thought that if someone is ready to give you a single rupee for what you're trying to say, that means you can sometimes validate it. It's very difficult to get a single rupee out of someone, you know, for the thing you are trying to build in. And that, with that thought, we started interacting with people, you know, pitching our solution to to the you know director of our companies to even a local quality manager and working with their entire segment everyone has their own uh, you know uh, different things in fact uh, one of the major key insight which i learned from gdc is okay there is something called sabotizers as well and that time you know i was all i was in a mode that okay how that could into the picture but the moment i jumped into the field i realized okay those people are actually there and you know how you need to work on uh, and uh, have to take your product uh, in, in direction. So th that sort of thing has helped me out. Uh, as Anand sir already said, we just recently finished our seed out on funding from Indian Angel Network. And now uh, we are trying to, you know, um, scale our sales into the different domain and trying to make uh, agricultural a bit of a digital. And uh, yes, that's all from, you know, how our things have been. You, you also okay. decided that you will not be taking up employment. Even yes, though, yes. even though at that stage you were still not clear about where your startup is heading, uh, you had <laughs> jumped in, but you got a lot of invalidation for what you were <laughs> trying to validate. But you still decided to stick to the journey that you had begun and uh, yeah. did not take a placement. So, what was that? What was the tipping point for you to decide to stay the course? So here, you know, I try to put uh, what are my preferences. Uh, one day I sat with all my pa uh, with my parents, my brother, and everyone. I asked, "Are you in dire need of money so that I could I need to go for a job?" Everyone says, "No, we don't uh, like we have enough." So I'm like, "Okay, then don't expect me to go for a job immediately." <laughs> then they immediately thought I'm like I'm in a some confused state. So peer pressure and everything came into the picture. But then I started putting on what I actually want in, and uh, adding to what Anurag also said. Then I started evaluating. At what are my skills that at any point in my life, if I need to go for, you know, uh, thinking about earning or something, can I do it? I said, yes, I can always, you know, try out. So then let me come to the risk taking part of what I actually want to build up on and based on my skills and uh, evaluation. And that actually motivated me that whatever, you know, uh, I had an option that uh, what uh, work I did in my Manchester, I had an option to go back over there, continue the same or, uh, you know, go to somewhere else. But then I realized uh, whether it's all about the money part or the livelihood part or is it something about what uh, I should be feeling happy in what I'm trying to build in and I chose a later. Thanks, Amit. And then we have Mayuri, Mayuri Chopra. Um, Mayuri is, uh, she identifies herself only as a marine biologist and not as an entrepreneur. She's a very <laughs> passionate marine biologist. She studied in Australia. She's uh, worked there and she's come back to the country. She attended the 11th cohort of our uh, incubator program. We'll go to Mayuri Chopra. MC is MB, actually. She's not a, she's not Mayuri Chopra. She's a marine biologist. Um, <laughs> I keep rubbing it in every time. I get it all. Yeah. I keep rubbing yeah. it in. Right? Uh, I would call her a reticent entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll hear from her why I say that. Mayuri, over to you. Thank you so much, Anand. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, GDC, for having me here. Um, uh, well, um, yes, I am a marine biologist, but I'm just as committed to my entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> so um, I uh, graduated in 2017. I did my master's from, us, from Australia. And uh, since then, um, I traveled and I worked in various continents with various organizations. Um, and um, my goal uh, since the very beginning was to um, 
conserve and protect marine life. And um, I think the parts that I choose for it may be diverse, may be different, may be unique. But what matters is not the path. It is the goal where you want to get to, the impact you want to make. And that is how actually I was steered into this path of entrepreneurship. Um, so uh, I was working in Ireland uh, in 2019. And that is when I think that's what I consider my moment of truth uh, is because I was working as a rescue and a rehabilitation person who was, you know, rescuing marine mammals. We, we find a lot of injured, uh, sick or just affected marine mammals. Um, and every day I used to see cases of um, plastic ingestion, plastic entanglement, injuries because of that, deaths because of that. And, uh, you know, something that hands on really affects you. And um, I think that's, that's the first time that I realized that I was, when I was doing all of this, um, I was actually um, working on the consequences of the plastic industry rather than the source of it. And uh, I then decided that I wanted to become an entrepreneur or have a startup and sort of like that would target um, the source of the problem. Back then, I didn't have an idea. I just, I just knew that I had to make a bigger impact. Uh, my, you know, motion of thoughts actually came into action when I returned back to India the same year and uh, I met my team. Um, so um, I am the CEO of Roha Biotech. Uh, we make uh, biodegradable packaging and uh, um, our biocomposite packaging is aimed to replace styrofoam. And uh, the CTO of our, of our company is Aditya Srinivas, who I met through our C COO, who is uh, Vivek Rachuri. So all three of us met in South India. We were in Vizag and uh, we got together and, you know, we were, we um, actually explored a lot of ideas. Like we didn't incorporate the company for at least like six, six months. We were working on a few ideas. We were doing trials. Um, we had ranges from like bioplastics to biofertilizer. But um, something that, you know, always united us was this, uh, was this vision. And um, like we are a very diverse team uh, in terms of background, personalities, uh, ex expertise. We're just very different people. But we are still all united by this uh, one vision to uh, build a build healthier oceans for the marine life to have to build a better planet. Not just so if some something is affecting the marine life, it's of course going to affect the the terrestrial life as well. But our focus and like when we started, we wanted that we want healthier oceans, and it's no secret that plastics and Packaging, especially, is a uh, is one of the biggest and one of the major polluters of it. So um, we targeted that, and um, you know we we the we've chosen this product and we finally settled on this product not just because of the potential of the product because other products also had the potential, but uh, also because of the right timing, the potential of the customers that we would get, the scale of the impact that it, it would create. And I think all of it just, add, it just added together. And even, you know, till date, something that keeps us going because um, everybody is different. So everybody has different opinions about different things, but something that unites us till date is, you know, that ideology uh, that should be uniform within the team. So you you know that, you know, uh, ultimately we're working towards this and, no matter what it takes, we're going to get it. So yeah, that, that was uh, our beginning. Okay, that's an interesting um, you know, point you made about what unites the team and what keeps you going, um, irrespective of the differences, the different backgrounds, social backgrounds, economic backgrounds, personalities, and so on. So this, you know, this is critical for founders. So anyone who's considering building a startup, startup is never a one man's game. And, uh, but at the same time, it just does not work because you have three people in your startup as co-founders. 
who are these co-founders, what actually binds you together. All the three people that we have today are living examples of how they could make it work only because they are teamed with the right people. And they all have the same passion. So it's not like one is you know, investing money and doing what he or she wants to do, and the others are trying to make the startup work. They are all in it, they're all in it together. And it, you know, it's, it's a bond that cannot be explained in words, and they fight. So if they don't fight, then they are seriously wrong. Something is going wrong in that company. They fight a lot, but they are united. And that's really how startup begins. Um, now let me uh, you know, go back to Anurag and ask you the question. Having decided to pursue entrepreneurship the first time or the second time or the third time, but still every journey is unique. You know, what is the beginning of your startup journey? And in each journey, it will be different. We'll talk about how each journey has been different probably a little later. Let's talk about uh, your beginning. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, there would have been a lot of excitement as much as, uh, you know, doubt, uh, you, there would have been equal measure of excitement, building something on your own. And uh, so just briefly talk about your beginning and then I'll have some more questions for you. Yeah, so uh, like uh, I, I just take some words, uh, borrow it from you, what you told the last. It all starts with like a few people uh, coming together whom you can, sh whom you share a common synergy, a common vision and yeah, that, that is uh, like how it all started. So having dabbled into a lot of things, uh, if I wouldn't have dabbled, I would have still thought that maybe that was something more interesting or something. But having done multiple things, I realized that, okay, these things, like uh, irrespective of the money that they could make or uh, what is in it uh, that I was doing, I, I still felt that I am passionate about healthcare and medicine. And uh, yeah, so the team is all how it started about met a few people, we started uh, exploring uh, multiple problems, talked to like not exactly in an organized fashion, but uh, kept talking to people, kept talking to people around us, doctors, uh, people whom we knew and uh, again, also a lot of friends and all and uh, later on many of them uh, left their jobs and joined us and uh, that is how like everything began uh, initially. And uh, as engineers, it was all like, I, I feel in retrospect, not the greatest way to go about it. It was more about building and the excitement that you get from building things versus uh, like uh, what uh, you learn the hard way when you start off the actual business journey that uh, build something that people want and not something that uh, you enjoy or uh, you want to build. So as engineers, I feel that that is something I still uh, find it challenging that uh, there's a thrill in building things, but right. at the same time, you have to realize that do people need it or not? Right, right. That's caution. <laughs> the first thing is excitement. Second thing is caution. So having decided to, you know, work with the team, having decided to pursue your startup idea, having started, you know, developing your product, etc. Then, you know, still in the early days, I'm still in your early days of your startup. What are the most exciting moments in those first few months of your startup journey? Few months meaning six months, it could be three months. What are those most exciting moments for you? I'll start with my first venture. So they are like, uh, like even before we incorporated, it was like the sales that people are willing to write a check and uh, uh, give it to us that uh, gave us immense confidence. And probably even after, uh, after that, we, we, Around that time, we, there was only one paid employee. We all were uh, unpaid, not on salaries. Uh, there was only one employee that we had. Uh, uh, the salaries of uh, the salary for him used to go from there. And uh, even after three, four months, we decided let's incorporate now. Uh, high time, and that that sales thing is actually in hindsight very exciting. In my third leg of entrepreneurship, again uh, the the touching uh, that the counter is ringing and uh, people are uh, the people are paying you for the product and it is getting delivered that is very uh, exciting the other aspect of it is like uh, when uh, like in my first uh, venture when you he, he, hear in retrospect the stories from these doctors or the testimonials that uh, how the product actually was being used and uh, how they feel about it that uh, it it was able to like out of 100 people if we are even able to save uh, 
uh, like one a person identify they they might go into a complication and alert the doctor the life uh, being saved so that was a thrill that you cannot uh, quantify or give a metric to what was the most depressing moment for you so uh, like a depressing moment uh, like in my second venture like when i when i was transitioning from the first venture to the second so the, like with the first venture i always uh, made it sure that because of me things should not dismantle so i took around 6 months of time to uh, have the proper handing over and everything before exiting starting my next venture and uh, like after running it for around 3 years and realizing that okay this is not something the service uh, though it was making healthy amounts of money uh, for us but not something that excites uh, doing a project then handing it over doing another project at that point of time when you have to like you're back to square one you have to like uh, unfortunately i had to dismantle the team uh, though i helped everyone uh, get another job I, I, because that is something which was a uh, like uh, uh, i want needed to take care of before uh, venturing out again going to the drawing board that uh, what next uh, in my product journey so that is uh, that was something really painful that uh, you have to dismantle the team after working 3 years 4 years uh, with everyone right, together right okay i'll come back to you amit um you talk about your beginning and talk about the most exciting moment in your journey <clears throat> so sir like our beginning you know uh, as i said we were always you know affection towards the food wastage in canal initially i used to read an article you know sometimes fsci and everyone has said and there was certain articles which i landed upon and make me you know very very some like you know 45% of perishable food is just getting wasted and i'm like come on it's literally half like and <laughs> that's a you know if i would say in a frankly that's when i took it personally like if uh technology is there and you know why can't why can't we work out it uh, in that manner so uh, then uh, one of the very uh, exciting moment you know which happened to me was uh, when i was in gdc and you know i come from northern part of india and you know we were just uh, doing our customer survey at a very you know remote corner of uh, southern part in near in, in tamil nadu and you know the guy doesn't know hindi the guy doesn't know english and i don't know tamil and still i ended up having a conversation with the person and somehow you know try to get the feel of what the other person is saying so you know it says right if someone has a problem without even telling they can you know interpret that so uh, these two three key factors actually motivated us and then uh, like in iit madras itself there used to be a lot more sessions where you know one can demonstrate the technology to various renowned in this list and so on and i ended up talking to uh, starting from uh, desh sir to chris sir and probably you know uh, so many people and everyone you know just got bit of an excited that okay you know try to figure out these there are these fields you can do that and something of that sort one time you know even one of our client when we were just initially pitching it and that was most happy you know happy moment for us that when we said you know look our device can determine what inside your fruit but internal quality without cutting it you know like is it seriously how how can you do that is it even possible and you know uh, and the mo- the joy when you see with that you know surprising joy i would say that okay is it in like in you you have done this in india itself so that trust bringing back so that was all always our uh, driving factor that you know uh, let's have the tech over here itself we will build up things here and um, something which will uh, make people exciting So these right. all are enjoying moments, achievements. Of course, once in a while, uh, one uh, something happens, and uh, you know, through at that time we became national winner of Boeing build competition. And at that time, when they were announcing the results, and Ankit and me were very thrilled because we we, we even never faced any th- sort of thrill in our usual results in our college. But that time, the moment they said, "Okay, few laps," and it 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 was a very uh, joyous moment. And then then in national, then then international, and those all. uh small small achievements keep driving us to work we are doing it here right what is that one ouch moment or oh no moment uh, uh not one even in fact uh, a lot you know uh, i would start from a very basic problem of an uh, startup that you know you have an idea you want to work in and since we are in a hardware space 
and the saying says hardware is hard and let me you know verify that it is hard and initially you know you don't have money to pay to people or even to do something so what can you do so you end up selling your vision then rather than paying them and out of hunting a lot of people you'll end up find few people and sometimes uh, for not few people also leave you as well and uh, those are like what are we you know working on and sometimes you know you end up finding uh, i would say client or industry that will right away say that what are you building like you know do you even know if there is a scope or not and that's uh, those are the moments we realize okay you know things happen so such were like a let's say one day depression time and uh, our investment raising journey also went like that you know uh, initially some of rejections it made us going back to our you know board of where is the wrong is it wrong something in us or something the way we are doing it so bit of an ouch moment but more than a learning right but mayuri the we know that you came back you met the aditya and vivek and all of you the three minds excited about the numerous opportunities and you got excited about what should we be building and uh, everybody is aligned with the vision so a lot of excitement right in the beginning but after that excitement died what did you do and what were your first few challenging moments okay um so after we all met um like i said that we were experiment like we were exploring uh, a few ideas and um our first idea actually was um, again in the packaging sector uh, but it was to replace soft plastics and we were creating a biofilm but uh, we just kept hitting you know dead ends and it was um sort of apart just from the product as well there were a few existing players in the market and there was already competition for the similar type of product and it just you know we weren't uh, very successful in that and um, our current product which is a bio composite actually started as a backup plan and uh, we were like okay you know this research is going to take very long we need more money for this so let's start this and uh, because this is also on, on like the similar vision so let's start this and um and once we started and uh, it seemed easier but it's actually not and once we started developing it we started to do like intense re- research on it we actually started to recognize the real potential uh, this product in itself had and um that's when we you know uh, decided to um switch to this as our main product and uh, of course like um the people we shared it with uh, their enthusiasm and their reactions to it also altered our perception of it um and um but you know like um i think switching to this was one of the best decisions that we made back then and back then we thought that we are taking a big risk because you know we are we've done so much work on this one product and we are just you know um moving on to something else but um we uh, i mean i think we were just guided by the right people then and um we moved to this um but even when we did that we were not able to portray exactly you know how to use such a diverse material so for those who don't know uh, the biocomposite that we are making it's it can be molded into any shape any size in any way so it sounds amazing but actually when you have a material this versatile it gets very hard to decide where you want to go first and where you want to use it who do you want to sell it to who actually wants it because anybody could want it um and that was one of uh, um you know a major issues um that we faced in the beginning um and um uh, it was turning out to be more of a curse for us uh, until like we came to i incubate and we started to like discover our customers and we started the whole process um yeah sorry um the biggest rejections i'm not going to let this go cuz we have we've had a lot of them <laughs> um so we actually so now uh, we are officially bio incubators at iit madras but uh, this is not the first time that we applied um so we've been rejected uh, twice before and um one for a separate product 
that was an older product but one for the same product we went in and uh they were confused as to where we want to sell it and what do we actually want to do with it so that clarity was missing and right after that and that was you know one of our biggest disappointments because um we went in with a product we really believed in and that just didn't go as planned and we were rejected in the screening so that was a very disappointing uh, moment for us the one thing that i observed when three of them spoke is each one of them had uh, you know i don't know if the word is passion or vision but whether it is anurag who uh, decided that he has to do something in healthcare amit it's all about food wastage and what really drives him and motivated him to jump into this journey even to give up placements is this and for mayuri and the team it is saving the planet from the menace of plastics so startup founders do not just make it successful just because they were there at the right time at the right place and did the right thing it is not as simple as that we keep hearing about huge successes these unicorns that we keep hearing about yesterday i mentioned we don't hear about you know we hear about 1% of the success stories i mean 1% stories which are successful stories and we don't hear about the 99% of the stories which are not so successful and this doesn't happen just because you were at the right time at the right place and uh, doing the right things the, the the purpose that each one of them had behind creating this venture the purpose that drove them to give up everything else and jump into this entrepreneurial journey and the entrepreneurial mindset that they had and they continued to develop there's a lot of hard work besides tough decisions there is a lot of hard work as well and hard work is not easy when you don't have a passion or a vision that is driving you because most of the times we stop and ask ourselves do i really need to work this hard can i not just quit and go to google and uh, microsoft can i not make enough money what keeps you you know to stay the course is not just the excitement of building something it is also the reason behind wanting to stay and build something exciting so i see this very clearly people usually don't talk about it we don't hear about you know what is truly behind the startup but now it is quite evident so and and uh, mayuri when you ended you, you spoke about the biggest challenge that you had the disappointment you had when you got rejected because there was no clarity it's 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 strange that you are so passionate about something but you don't have clarity about something you know it's isn't it strange you know even you are passionate about something you would expect it to be you know you will expect yourself to be at most clear, clear but here the clarity that was lacking was about customers not about the idea right? right and how even if you had an idea that is a brilliant idea but if you don't have clarity about who needs it and why rejection is unavoidable and exactly. yeah. and and that is the turnaround story in your case and i would like to hear more about that let me first start with uh, anurag there are some turnaround turnaround stories that has happened to happened with all our startups uh, you know that we have worked with and uh, share with us your gdc experience and that turnaround story that happened for you even though you were already an entrepreneur and how gdc played a role in shaping your entrepreneurial skills mindsets and you know pushing you forward to keep creating more ventures so uh yes yeah, so like uh, i i do i am in my third leg of entrepreneurship but the learning never ends so there is like every time there is something new to learn in fact uh, like some of the gdc learnings uh, has stayed with me for like uh, i don't think i lose them now i just keep them uh, passing on to the, uh, passing them on to my team uh, as well so uh like some of the like one of the major learnings that i still feel that uh, was very important was uh, talking to people talk to customers don't just uh, uh, keep building the products and uh, like turn around moment if i have to recall uh, like post uh, like uh, i i think you might remember the idea that we came up uh, to gdc with uh, like uh, uh, putting ai and identifying uh, like the right cosmetics for people and uh, post that in fact i sold a lot of cosmetics as well and uh, like in that course of time though it was a learning experience uh, the sales uh, and marketing anyways excite me as an entrepreneur uh, besides the research mindset 
but i realized okay that that is not something i may be happy doing uh, uh, like uh, for a long uh, uh, period of time and uh, identify the right uh, point i uh, like i have been uh, uh, i i i'd say i have been good at convincing people to leave their jobs and uh, join me i have done it uh, repeatedly uh, uh, three times now and uh, was well, around that same time was uh, fortunate enough to get my, my two other co-founders quit their uh, jobs from big M, uh, multinational consulting companies and uh, join me and uh, we started neo docs around that same time again that uh, covid thing happened and uh, every all the plans that uh, that were made uh, like were again uh, like uh, remained as it is how we were thinking about and all and uh, that time uh, though i like in hindsight i feel that we did something very good we talked to a lot of people so uh, consciously unconsciously that thing and i like uh, being uh, like uh, being also a part of recently for, for international accelerator y combinator i still feel that same learning is repeated everywhere so it is not something that uh, uh as an entrepreneur i feel that i'll ever take it lightly talking to customers that that has led us to a lot of uh, turning moments in our entire journey so talking to customers is the biggest learning for you and uh, gdc probably had played a role in getting you to start talking to customers yes very good amit um, you know you um you were clear when you came to the program that, about what you were trying to do probably too clear that you were not willing to let go of that clarity because it's frightening to let go of something that you think you are very clear about but during the program itself uh, at least twice you had to let go of what you came with and uh, so talk about the role that gdc played in such a short time how it taught you how to let go and what exactly did it do to you and to your startup so for me you know as you talked about this part uh, uh, the major thing was uh, coming from a tech background that i had a belief that what we built this is what has been required and the major turn around is always when we started showing it to someone and you always had this perception you know uh, the buzzword called ai deep tech everything you know this is what the world wants the moment you go and talk to a farmer the farmer is like what the heck is that i don't even know what what you are trying to say so so the if i uh, if i would uh, like to you know term it you know the uh, benefits you are trying to give to a customer is not the values which they are getting it so and that is what my key learning is always that you know no matter how many features we can integrate into our system and whatever we can build upon you we can literally put some rockets over there but the customer is not going to pay for it customer doesn't want it And, and and trust me when we i'm talking about we had an uh, uh, like scenarios where we asked people just use it for free please like this is what we built please use it for free and even that's when also you know we faced that no we don't have enough time for doing that as well you know either you build something which we wanted or why would we even use it for free as well and that's where we it was a surprising for us as well that you know we always have this like i not just us also i think everyone used to think that you know you give something to, uh, to, uh, for free to anyone and they'll use it but people are people are very busy they are not going to use it so rather uh, uh, rather randomly you know trying to uh, put anything to a customer rather trying to understand where their major issues are and you know that that, that that's what you know a uh, major learning is always with me from the gdc part apart from you know even, even figuring out i still remember from my initial days uh i think a week or two weeks when i attended and i always were confusion that uh, gain or benefits and values everything is same thing you know whatever i'm giving to a customer is a gain for it or or a, or everything is a pain for the customer so all those elemental uh, learnings uh, we try to put in to actually figure out you know uh, like what uh, thing you can integrate so that your customer is willing to pay you one rupee or one dollar that's uh, that's the thing you know uh, helped us throughout this to improvise it and not just then even now also we have been improvising and and this is another uh, learning that even in a startup uh, especially in hardware of course software is also there but especially in hardware you keep improvising as the market needs something 
some sometimes something they will uh, want you to deliver something else but later their expectations increases and that's where you have to keep uh, you know talking to them not even like uh, you know once you sold the product just that's it the relationship doesn't end there in fact the relationship starts from there that now what else you want how can i improvise it so the, i think the lesson here is you don't need to build a rocket powered by ai to solve a common farmer's <laughs> problem the farmer's okay. is what we don't understand but we understand ai and building rockets and we believe that the farmer needs it i think okay. that that's, that's really you know well put thank you for that mayuri what about your uh, experience uh, you know learning the customer discovery process going through the intense boot camp um, share your experience with us yeah okay so um <clears throat> the first week of uh, gdc i incubate when we started the first week was actually very disappointing for us <laughs> because all of these you know imaginary notions we have about the product about you know something we've invested a lot of time and effort in then sort of just like broken down and because um when things are broken down into certain categories and questions are asked there is a clarity missing so uh, you know it's it's it starts with a very tough learning but um the format of the program i think i really like because it's very intensive and um we had many uh, assumptions being invalidated um a week after week so we spoke to customers they invalidated it but there's no time to you know uh, mope about it you just like get back up on your feet make new assumptions and go and try it out with other customers so i think um when we started we had uh, a completely different set of value props and uh, by by the time we finished we had different sets for different cus- customers so i think that was uh, you know um, a big learning for us um apart from that um i think uh, something that we really had uh, drawn out of it was to get the problem solution fit for the customer not for a general problem because everybody knows pollution is bad but who needs it who needs your product that was something our that line of thinking was something that we weren't doing before the program because we of course know it's a big problem but um for whom was something that we only learned when we were in the program um apart from that i think uh, while talking to customers it's important to understand when a customer is complaining and when they actually need something so that is also some something uh, we learned um we learned to be more realistic about our assumptions and also proper organization with the the business model canvas so that you you know whenever you need to have an overlook of where you're going your progress you can take a step back and just and your uh, just and uh, analyze your board and uh, i th- i think all of these things really helped us and something we always kept saying was pivot 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 or was said to us a lot of times uh, cuz whenever we hit an end we pivoted whenever we hit an end we like had the agility in our team to you know uh take different ways to uh, get our assumptions and that evidence validated right right so so what i am hearing from all three of you it's coming out very loud and clear is talk to customers and talk to real customers talk to you know sometimes people take the easy way out by talking to friends who they imagine could be a potential customer at some point in time so let me talk to my friend what we really push teams to do during the eight weeks is talk to strangers not just talk to customers but talk to strangers don't go and talk to people who you have uh, you know a relationship with you know them already you are familiar with and yes they could be your potential customers but there's no point in talking to them so it it sounds very simple and in all you know in hindsight it always sounds very simple what's a big deal just go and talk to 50 people go and talk to 60 people and if that is the only thing that you are learning then why do we need to spend 8 weeks and go through this you know big drama of uh, you know an intense boot camp you just tell us i'll go and talk to people if that is what is the only thing that you are teaching in this program or if you are getting 
startups to benefit from. But truly, I think you heard it from the three of them, even though they did not necessarily say it in so many words, but point is talk to customers, talk to potential customers, talk to strangers. There is no substitute for talking to those stranger customers. All the lessons are learned only by talking to them. And what we do in the program is actually help you realize that and also get clarity about what kind of conversations you should be having. You're not going and selling, you're not going and giving a demo, you're truly understanding customers' problems. And that's why you have an opportunity to pivot or you have an opportunity to say, this is not going to work, I need to do something else. It's, it's not decided in the lab that this is not going to work. It's decided because the customer says, this is not what I want. And then you come back and say, no, this is not what I should be building. I should be building something else. Solutions have changed. The understanding of the segments have changed. Everything has changed. All that happened, I mean, all, all, all those things happened only because they went and spoke to 100 plus strangers who could be potential customers. That's really where the lessons are. So if anybody is thinking of building you know, a startup, you don't have to come and spend eight weeks with us if you don't want to, but you certainly please go and talk to those strangers and don't talk about your product or about your idea. Just listen to them. Have half an hour, 35, 40, 50, one hour conversations. Just listen to them and you'll know. And I think Mayuri made a very good point. A lot of times we get misled by what people tell us. Sometimes when you go to people and ask them what problems do they have in life, they pour their hearts out to you. But are they really facing problems or are they simply complaining? You should be able to differentiate between the two. If, if whatever say, they are saying, pouring their hearts over, is convenient to you because it confirms your biases about your solution and why they need your solution, you will get excited and you will once again be misled. You will develop something. And when you actually take it to them, they'll say, you know, what do you mean? I didn't cry. I don't have this problem. I don't need it. And you are surprised. You know, why do they say that? Because they were simply complaining they were not really giving you their pains for you to solve or problems to solve. So you need to be able to distinguish all that happens in the customer discovery process. Now, um, very quickly, I will also get Anurag to talk about the continuing association with Lean Startup, not just with this GDC, but their continuing association and you know uh, practice of the Lean Startup methodology and how they have repeatedly use the customer discovery process. Even in three, three times startup, it happens. It's not like first time you do it and then you, you know, everything works like that. And they, how they are associating with us uh, even now. So Anurag, do you like to share how it is continuing to help you the process and the framework? Yeah, the, so around the process and framework, like uh, something that was uh, like uh, beaten into us that talk to people, uh, like one of the things that don't feed words into like don't lead people with what you want to listen don't listen with a filter what you just want to listen and just discard everything else so that was something uh, which I feel uh, is gold uh, in fact like for me if I have to say a lot of the actual action became uh, began after GDC so attending it religiously at that point of time listening to everything like uh, getting to hear where, what other people are doing, doing your own bit and all. And that was a great uh, experience to have. But uh, a lot of things began post it when you are, again, back from the boot camp, again, into the practical reality of the startup. You have to make it work. There's no other option. And uh, where you like uh, use this. So uh, even in fact, uh, the, I, I still, I don't remember the tool's name, but I really like the tool that... Uh, was there where you used to feed in the customer interviews and the trends or you can Sounds you could have right. selected the yeah the value prop and all to get everything out from those interviews uh, uh, so for example currently we do it in excel sheets or word doc i like if that is something which is actually available for us still i'd be happy to get uh, back into it. For one of you here you can build it <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so the lean startup thing, I, uh, we still follow, we talk to people, in fact, uh, uh, whomever we currently sell to, we have a WhatsApp group that we make with those people, with the founders and the other person, uh, because of the COVID constraints and all, we constantly talk to people, what they like, what they did not like, what, like, asking them open-ended questions, listening from them, uh, like whether it was useful or not, in a lot of cases, genuinely, there are uh, flaws in the, with the product or with the 
fit that we imagined that okay these are the right people but once they use the product we realize that okay this there is something uh, like very uh, huge amiss that it is not something that is meeting the uh, purpose so we uh, religiously do this i have passed on the entire learnings to the new folks so who joined the team and all uh, so we talk to people we listen to them constantly we incorporate the feedbacks and all or at least uh, uh, listen to the feedback and uh, develop our product pipeline when would be the right time we don't just uh, like uh, what has changed from previous time to now we don't just uh, build a feature if we hear two or three people asking for that feature we don't just blindly stop everything and start building that feature that okay this is the huge thing that will uh, be a success we we just packet it into the pipeline so the lean startup thing yes it is helping uh, us a lot still right 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 amit uh, what are uh, your takeaways and how it is continuing to help you the lean startup the customer development framework and the customer discovery process and how you are associated with gdc even beyond the boot camp so one thing sir since i, I you know did our gdc a long time before and for a good amount of time we were also you know applying the learning concept and that is where i actually you know realized what are the benefits of such sort of uh, ecosystem like or such sort of uh, directed approach in startup methodology and that's where in fact you know while having all the discussion terms or uh, talking in terms uh, i started applying into it and and probably in fact i started getting further uh, you know advices from you and ragu sir as well like you know uh, this is my talk is happening with the customer and and one major thing which throughout the program from starting to till now while being the part of the program is you know uh, a problem is not something which uh, you ask to the customer and these says rather what he keep bragging about it and because Uh, one major thing we realized is uh, you know because of the fear of rejection uh, people tend to uh, take a conversation in a direction where you get comfortable in and mm-hmm. uh, throughout the uh, gdc fort is you know get out of your comfort zone so you you know we started adapting that it's good to have rejections it let's let's we are uh, hear what exactly has been happening and 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 uh, all these uh, part which actually anurag also mentioned uh, just before that uh good amount of time people will just keep telling you you know can you build that can you build this at an initial stages uh startup always thinks that okay this is something you know we should be bringing in because our customer is saying but it's not a binary approach there are different sort of people with a different thing all you can do is what the majority wants you can do it otherwise you'll end up wasting your time and you know and it's been helping with me and now uh, as well like while having any time talking with you ragu sir and entire gdc part that okay this is where i'm getting stuck in and where i can further improvise so that that's creating an important role good good there's been it's been a roller coaster ride for you we know that because we've been working with you and uh, you know it's it's not it has not been easy and uh, i'm glad you you know you stuck to the journey and uh, we have i'm also happy we played a part in that journey and we are continuing to play a part we have a program called ignite which uh, is after incubate so teams uh, who pursue the startup journey who continue the startup journey and who are ready to jump in with a team and with you know commitment we work with them and we work for a longer time with the teams and uh, we actually take the startup from where we left in the incubate program where customer discovery has happened you understood the problems but now you need to start building something you need to test it you need to create an organization you need to raise money you need to you know comply with the legal and the, all the regulations etc so there's much more you know than just speaking to customers all this gets covered in the next program that we have we call ignite and uh, that can go from 12 to 18 months and uh, amit this uh, one of our early entrance into the uh, ignite program as well uh, so he's he's quickly he's signing up soon for the ignite program uh, mayuri um, how about you you know yes you told us about the disappointments during the gdc journey uh, but how is the journey beyond gdc and how was it helping you what you learned how is it helping you and there may be some incidents that happened after gdc's program got over It's not been very long since you finished the program. It's probably less than a year, close to a year. Um, yeah, one year. 
one year what has the journey been like um so since we finished the gdc program it's honestly uh, been uphill um, uphill for us um we cleared the iitm bio incubation screening uh, we are now officially incubated with them uh, we also uh, received a virtual incubation from riddle which is a government supported uh, center and uh, we also received the uh, nidhi prayas grant uh, from department of science and technology and we have recently cracked the uh, bairak uh, big big grant so i think the learnings that we had in gdc really amplified our our growth as we went on and that couldn't have been done uh, without you know the ongoing support that we had because after the boot camp you know real life and like real pace everything was there and um especially like rajiv uh, anand and raghu you have all like supported us throughout the process and um you've guided us to make the right decisions even when it was you know a tough call um i think the incident you're referring to is uh, the vc incident so um so i'll give you an example um uh so uh, very early on after we finished the program uh, a a big vc a venture capitalist was uh, in, was interested in our startup and uh, they offered us funding as well however um with everybody's guidance we were able to recognize the importance of right timing and the importance that maybe when we are still in the research and development phase having a vc on board wouldn't be the best choice for us and it was actually like an extremely tough choice for us back then because uh, back then we didn't have iit and we didn't have nidhi prayas we didn't have big we literally were really budding and we were starting off with our journey and when funding comes along at this point to say no is um, very difficult uh, but we are glad that we made the decision because otherwise we would have been in a difficult situation at this point but was the funding so, coming yeah. also and they were charging too much of uh, you know share was it that also that yeah yes so it was equity as well and um, that was you know one of the toughest calls we made cuz uh, you need money for you know research and development and you're like looking in for fact, it you, but you, then, in fact it looks like you're leapfrogging and suddenly somebody is pulling you back no you leapfrog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's very difficult with the bad guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. the bad parent but it's it, <laughs> the tough parent has <laughs> fallen bad yeah yeah the tough parent yeah yeah definitely <laughs> uh but it really did help us you know because eventually we did get the grants that were right for us you know at this point because right now we're still developing and you know we need that so yes so in fact in fact the way anand was showing your background like you're so passionate about it and your you know whole issue of saving marine life मुझे लग रहा था आपका कंपनी तो कुछ होगा ही नहीं यू नो लाइक जो प्रोसेस हो रहा है जैसे इवन द पीपल सिट देयर ऑपोजिट यू नो हु आर गोइंग टू गिव ग्रांट्स एंड ऑल यू नो इट लुक्स वेरी फिलंथ्रोफिक इट लुक्स वेरी नॉन बिजनेस लाइक सो यू नो लाइक आई थिंक दिस होल ग्राउंडिंग लाइक वॉट आनंद एंड यू नो राजीव एंड that we have been saying you no know, like you you have to have your customer there and that's where you start up right if you don't get stuck you know not a start up right you have to have exactly. that you know, passion you need to have that what do you call uh, commitment and you have to have that uh, the, you know ambiguity to get into business right agar sab kuch pata hota hamare jaise log jo professor hai kabhi nahi kar pate na business mein humko sab kuch pata hai for example <laughs> yeah very nice yeah go ahead arun thank you thank you anurag you are a serial entrepreneur now okay yeah. and we have lot of aspiring and budding entrepreneurs in this forum what would you like to tell them one of the thing uh, which has been popularized uh, like what mayuri also told uh, last that uh, like money of funding that the glamour the glamorization that has been there it is like i feel it is too overrated uh, because this money is not the cause for startups dying majority of them it is not the cause that money uh, money was not there that is why uh, startups died majority of the time it is the product market fit when you have not arrived at something that people want uh, you built something that you wanted you were good at uh, 
probably without talking to customers and uh, also like uh, extending to professor chakravarti that is where the uh, like i feel the thin divide between an entrepreneur and a researcher comes in that a researcher is passionate about what he is building what he knows the skills the entrepreneur has to balance it it is uh, now also about business so money uh, aspect it is uh, very popularly glamorized that funding uh, this has happened and this much money has come in and all and uh, i i have run both uh, moderately funded startup decently funded startup and a bootstrap startup i i now in hindsight i feel that i can say that not a lot of things change even if you have a lot of uh, bank balance it cannot bring you a uh, product market fit that you have to work hard for no amount of money if you uh if you don't have a product market fit at best that money can last you uh help you survive for a longer time and then eventually die off but yes you have to uh so the money aspect is something that i that's like that, 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 that is that. delaying the process in fact that's much worse right bahut yes. dekh jaake aap aapka khatam hone wala hai so you, you know, reach the same right. conclusion you, 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 you eventually reach the same conclusion yeah, yeah. and and one other thing is that it sometimes creates an illusion that you can multiply effort you can scale the team and sales team and that will actually uh, mm. solve the entire issue and getting in more programmers building in more features and all so uh, sometimes uh, like we personally are we do keep cautious that uh, that illusion does not happen so it could be detrimental as well uh, a lot of times having more money but yes that illusion of money is help, helping solve or funding is the entire aim is uh, something which i feel as a two over rated right right thank you thank you for that amit uh, you have gone through a lot of changes i just mentioned that you've gone through a true roller coaster ride it's not been easy for you it's your first venture and uh, it's not been easy for you um, and uh, so 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 you have a lot of experience even though this is your first venture i think you have experienced a lot in this venture what would you like to share with the audience here to all our uh, aspiring entrepreneurs you know one thing i not just even entrepreneurs even to everyone i just keep saying that you know rejections are very important part of life so 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 it's like learn to say no and learn to hear no as well and and when we were in a dire need of money as well and you know we were uh, raising funds from lot of people and you know we we were receiving a lot amount of rejections and each time we were just trying to understand where the rejection is coming in how can we improvise then there was a time that you know lot amount of people were asking us to take money and then we had to tell them no as well no like uh, we can't uh, get assisted because sometimes the vision doesn't align sometimes uh, you feel like you know that will not go in a direction where you want to take in so, so that's a very important uh, aspect that uh, like as as uh, both of the uh, uh, mayuri and anurag also said that funding never justifies the success of a startup and it it it's never does that it's not uh, you know it's just a milestone in the entire startup journey but uh, but that doesn't justify that whether you are uh, making something big or not so that is something you know to all uh, everyone uh, thinking in that direction so so it's like the day you someone starts building a company and i keep meeting a lot of entrepreneurs who just the way they start a company they will be like you know from where i raise fund from where i do that but not one not about you know whom i should deliver or who is my customer <laughs> so so that's a most overhyped thing i'm pretty much sure uh, both of my other panelists will also agree that there is a huge myth that in a startup you are own you are your own boss trust me that's the biggest myth i have ever seen you're never your own boss in the end you are also working for uh, your own company but uh, it's not like you know uh, you can just work one day and chill out six days or so so you have to uh, may have a discipline that only you can take things ahead yeah, it, it, it's a 24 by 7 work no <laughs> yeah yeah like anand we are very very curious to see all the three products hum log to product design wale hain communication wale hain humko bhi bahut curiosity ho raha hai inke products kaise hain <laughs> anyway if this type of is you should let us see you know okay. like amit sir nero mayuri sir nero like uh, anurag's products yeah how do they look what are they <laughs> i think this is uh, you know definitely we organize that this is coming out loud and clear startups are obsessed with two things product development adding features packing the product with you know anything and everything that you think you can do and the second thing is funding so in this the real startup journey 
gets completely lost. The customer is the number one entity in any organization, whether it is a startup or a large company. And the customer takes a back seat, everything else takes the front seat, especially product development and funding. These are the two biggest reasons why startups lose sight of what they should be really focusing on. And funding is overhyped. I think we've heard it from two people. It's not like they didn't need money. It's not like they had tons of money from their families and they therefore refused to take money. It was a tough decision for all three of them to say no to money. And uh, please, you know, Nick, take note of this because this is critical. Sometimes you have the wisdom to say no to money. Sometimes you need the right guidance and mentorship to say no to money. But don't just jump at money because money is coming your way. That is not what is going to make your startup successful. Mayuri, um, you know, I will ask you a different question, right? Because you're so passionate about saving the earth and, uh, you know, from the menace of plastics and so on. <laughs> what if your startup idea did not align with the passion to save the planet? Anand has chosen the toughest one for me. But, all right. <laughs> well, purpose-driven person. And uh, so it would be very hard for me to have a startup uh, which wouldn't align with the vision. Um, I mean, if I had to let my imagination run wild for a second, then I would say that it could have been a different product, but it could not have been a different vision. Um, and no matter the type of person you are, you know, you don't have to be like, you know, um, in any certain type of personality, but like, no matter who you are, I think you need to have certain belief or passion in your product. Because if you don't believe in your product, there's always going to be 50 external people who are telling you that, oh, this is not good. Uh, you're never going to get anywhere with this. So if you have so so many external influences, it's uh, it's inevitable that down the line, you'll get distracted and you won't have the zeal to work on it anymore. So just to for you to keep going and to keep working on it because it takes time. Nothing is an overnight process. It takes a lot of time. And even for us to have these little, you know, a few um, early successes, it's taken us two years to get even here. Um, and so it's very important that you believe in it. Um, and I don't think I would be able to work in a startup that I wouldn't believe in. Um, a lot of times I give more importance and because, you know, when like, um, like my other panelists were saying, you're not, uh, you know, you're, you're not, um, it's a misconception that you work uh, independently and like you don't, uh, um, you're your own boss when you have your startup. A lot of times I have to prioritize my startup uh, on top of my like ad other tasks or works because I know like we have to do this and we have to get it to a certain point. So this sort of zeal wouldn't come until I believed in it. So the vision, therefore, it is critical, right? It is not that, okay, I find something that is probably likely to be more profitable and let me jump. So Steve Blank actually talked about customer discovery and the way Steve Blank describes customer discovery in one sentence is, customer discovery translates the founder's vision into reality. That's how he speaks about customer discovery. And it's extremely important. The, the, most founders do not even know how to articulate their vision, but they do have a vision. So if you have a passion or a vision in you, and if you want to actually you know, build a startup to make that vision happen, that's great because you've already thought about it. But most of us don't even know how to articulate our own vision. And therefore we get, you know, we get confused between a startup and a business and, uh, you know, something that I need to do for my living. And uh, most people, therefore, lose out on a fantastic opportunity to jump into entrepreneurship. So with that, I will actually now come to the last round. And this is a rapid fire round. And I'm going to ask all three of you the same question. And very quickly, you need to answer, what, is, what does entrepreneurship mean to you? So like for me, I think it is the uh, getting it done attitude, uh, like the figuring out the how and uh, how, why, who, uh, the other questions on the go, just getting it done, executing stuff. That's entrepreneurship for you. Yes. What's entrepreneurial mindset for you? Entrepreneurial mindset, I'll say like uh, uh, 
keep keeping your like uh, the uh, like being an engineer it is very difficult to like uh, there are certain things that i actually truly want to build from the science engineering perspective and there are certain things that the customers want so that is like keeping that uh, thin line between that what is what uh, like your actual inherent interest and what people want uh, building the things that actually make you sustainable the entrepreneurial mindset you know allows you to put the customer before your yes. interest yes fantastic fantastic amit what does entrepreneurship mean to you in entrepreneurial mindset rapid fire uh, for me uh, everyone is an entrepreneur it's just a different domain we have been working on or uh, no matter if it's a researcher or if it's a how uh, if it's my mom or if it's me or anywhere and when it comes to an entrepreneurial mindset it's more about how do i convert a rejection into an opportunity that's what helps uh, that's what entrepreneurial mindset helps me to you know uh, ever to, to see uh, our opportunity lined up everywhere no matter whichever is it fantastic fantastic mayuri so entrepreneurship to me i think would mean the courage to bring about a change and an impact um and you know along the process you can pivot but you don't have to lose focus because that's also very important um and an entrepreneurial uh, mindset i think would be uh, to have the appetite for change within yourself as well you can't be too rigid based on your biases and your you know ideas and you should also have the agility within your team to do that so it's, it's it, again it's very interesting it comes out very clearly that you don't have to be titled as an entrepreneur to have the entrepreneurial mindset you know there a lot of times it's confusing, it's confusing for people you know entrepreneurship is something and uh, you know, everything is different no the word entrepreneur is a title and it's only that don't get too carried away with that title but the entrepreneurial mindset is really what is making people successful is making people commit to their vision and actually get things done so that's that's really how i would conclude this i have to thank all the panelists now uh, you know you've taken a lot of time to actually come and share your stories with us and it's been very very interactive and conversational i like it uh, you know i'm glad i did not give you time to prepare for it yeah so uh, my question is uh, how do you find the inertia that you know uh, your target audience might have right um, you know as uh, you know even if i i am somebody who needs a product i might be skeptical towards uh, using something that's uh, that does not have a brand name that's you know new in the market so uh, how do you deal with that kind of inertia uh, i remember this uh, one time uh when when i was working uh mm. we had this uh, uh i i don't remember the app's name but it was a brand new app and they did all their uh, research with us itself and uh, it's it's about ride sharing so that time it was very brand new but even then even though people were uh, giving very uh, positive answers none of us were, were ready to use it right so uh, how do you uh, deal with that kind of uh, 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 mentality that your target audience might have you have to find out the correct niche which actually for whom actually it is solving something or uh, like is actually really helpful i had the same uh, like doubts when i was around at the same time at gdc that uh, why would someone uh, like lo- have a look at a newer brand uh, they are already used to like age old brands and uh, i was surprised like uh, how much appetite there is in the market for if, and it is not uh, the entire segment there will be certain uh, people for for instance i'll take the example uh, exactly what I, i was doing so i i sold cosmetics at that point of time and it was an entirely brand new label a private label and i was like surprised that uh, there is a certain segment which will not look at uh, new brands but there is a certain segment which is actually lapping up these uh, new brands there is a niche that exists there and uh, like there are certain traits of those people so like for like your product you have to either identify these initial early adopters who will be in fact very helpful in giving you feedback helpful in building the product helpful in uh, like 
making it ready for uh, the later on adopters or the mass market when uh, it will pick up and these people would actually be the initial influencers within the community or the initial users most likely the other users would share certain traits from these people so if these even if these niche does not exist then you have to uh, critically think whether you are solving something for someone or uh, not that uh, that's a great question and um, you know you think that you have to start there but even before that there is a step of the entire customer discovery and throughout the discovery process you don't actually talk about your product so uh, you get um, answers from people which are not about your product and then you navigate and make your product to suit their needs so this risk of inertia you've already reduced it to more than half because you've gone out with what they exactly need so you've already navigated these just with talking to people without actually putting yourself out there with that risk in fact if you are uh, delivering a critical need so even uh, sometimes big brands start you know working with you and they'll give you in chances to actually you know you can explore it and that's what even happened in our case because uh, uh, coming from a uh, indian tech aspect you know sometimes people have an insecurities but then there are people who are ready to you know try out put, put your things on trial and and th- that is where your product has to you know come out it's like a it has to show that what you have actually developed for and uh, once that happens so that gives you some chances uh, my question was to mayuri that um, when your motivation behind building a startup is uh, to create a change and when it's so driven by passion and i understand like from this course i'm understanding that when you're building a startup there's so much more involved there's a timeline there's a huge amount of like um time involved so what what happens when after a lot of work the change that you might have wanted to see is not as significant as you thought or as quick um or uh, like you would have wanted it to be you the, a person is bound to lose faith in the product or they might lose um not interest the passion would be the same but there are like how do you get out of that loop of uh, not getting okay. to be like a drop in the ocean no like it's it's, it's a small thing no yeah, like you want to do very big yeah yeah <laughs> how do you like navigate through that uh, issue and yeah that's it that's a really good question and that's exactly why i was talking so much about my zeal to work because uh, of course um it's not an overnight process it's not even it doesn't happen in a few months um uh, it happens maybe you see some change in a few years but i think um right now the idea that we have or right now the business model or the way we want it we we are going to have certain goals around it and as we change as we learn we'll keep on pivoting and that's the only way you will like progress and move to the next level of you know change so you've attained some level of change and you think that oh maybe like you know i want to do more and then you pivot around it you talk to more customers and then you design your uh, model around it so it's a continuous process i don't think like you know you reach somewhere and then you're like oh you know um i wanted this change but i i didn't get it and like you know i haven't gotten it in two years now and uh, maybe i should quit this because it it is a long constant process at the end of the day we are changing uh, people's behaviors for any product you know and behavior change is an intricate science and it takes time and uh, patience is key of course um, and that's why you need to be committed to it and you ultimately you need to ask like how much does it matter to you and if it is actually required these are the only two questions at the end of the day which matter and you just keep going thank you all the speakers for you know the inspiring talk and gdc um my question um uh, was that uh, let's say you have an idea for startup and um let's say it's something like anurag's uh, in the area of healthcare or let's say it's something which has to do with e-commerce so do you restrict yourself first to the area uh, where you have defined your user let's say you target a state first or do you go the country level or global level i personally have followed we do not keep any constraint and in fact post covid uh, like pre covid it used to be that uh, wherever we were physically present we used to go around there and uh, talk to people uh, meet people uh, 
avoid avoiding uh, any uh, telephonic call and all uh, getting to see the like one of the things uh, again as a part of gdc that there are a lot of emotions that you miss over calls and uh, those aha moments that uh, the user is actually excited upon or is frowning upon uh, but post uh, like uh, post covid it has uh, become like all digital so we do not uh, that constraint has uh, like gone away a lot of people uh, try the product or like yeah, so i'll constrain to not uh, the uh, only to the customer like interviews and all so we talk to people uh, like not like we have gone beyond india as well talking to people uh, i understanding from them without telling them what we are building just we start off with we are passionate in healthcare looking at exploring a problems would like to understand about you your daily schedule or like open ended questions so uh, we do not constrain ourselves but at the same time we uh, we have to be like cautious about uh, for example particularly in healthcare when we are building uh, like indian ecosystem is very different from uh, western ecosystem because of the payer buyer uh, the relationship so we do not we have to take a lot of those thing elements into account so that is where like the real customer interviews we right now believe that for a year, year for a year or two when since we'll be in india so we focus a lot on people who are residing in india have been facing the uh, actual infrastructure and the processes uh, first time right so uh, what what happens when you're launching it when let's say if we've covered the customer interviews you've got to know the user uh, you've done the customer discovery so while launching do you uh, specifically keep it to that Uh, area or would you go global or country the whole country so it's, again starting off we try to be with the early adopters because we realize that uh, uh, we we do not first of all we do not want to wait for the perfect product there are a lot of things that need to be ironed out uh, in the product we already know that but at the same time we do not want to uh, wait for long to iron out everything so we start launching the product with the early adopters people whom we know that uh, what anand sir was telling for them uh, it's not the brand it's not the ui ux that is uh, something useful to them it is the functionality the particular thing that you are core thing that you are solving so starting off with them these are actually the users we have realized who also help you build the product as you move along that uh, automatically the priority is start getting set in okay this is something which needs to be built other these five things are bells and whistles and uh so yeah so that that is how we start off with we do not uh, like right away start off with marketing and selling the product to a broader audience thanks anurag again and uh, thanks the whole team akanksha you can do the honors of thanking everybody yeah we will yeah close. so i would like to thank you uh, for you know this uh, lecture because uh, i think professor chakravarty has also been trying to divert our minds from the idea or from the design or say the product towards other processes but since we've been doing this for a while i think we've uh, concentrated on that for uh, too much uh, uh, time so uh, it this it was good knowing that you know we have to uh, let go the idea of what we are going to produce or make and uh, work before that and around it first and then actually uh, develop that so that's great and also uh, you know knowing that you can drop out of placements is also i think a good uh, insight because uh, i this is the semester where we are all uh, you know signing up for placements and looking for companies so that's also one more thing that it was really great to know so thank you